With economic development, the demand for refrigerants used in air conditioning and refrigeration equipment has been increasing rapidly, especially in developing countries given the growing need for quality of life and food safety as driving factors. It is estimated that the penetration of air conditioners AC will double in 2030 and increase by three and a half times in 2050 compared to 2016. Both chlorofluorocarbons, CFCs, and hydrochlorofluorocarbons, HCFCs, are ozone-depleting substances that are being phased out. This notwithstanding, hydrofluorocarbons, HFCs, a substitute for CFCs and HCFCs, have a global warming potential, GWP, of about 100 to 1,000 times higher. Therefore, in case they are released into the atmosphere without proper management, there will be a tremendous impact on climate change. International regulations on fluorocarbons have been introduced and implemented with a step-by-step -step approach since 1987 through the Vienna Convention for the Protection of the Ozone Layer and its Montreal Protocol. In addition to regulations on ozone-depleting substances, ODS, in 2016, the Kigali Amendment was adopted to regulate HFCs, which are strong greenhouse gases, GHGs. The Montreal Protocol regulations is focusing on production and consumption. Thus, countries are gradually reducing their consumption of HFCs. Targeting the so-called upstream segment of the life cycle is effective in suppressing new increases in HFCs. Nevertheless, fluorocarbon banks, refrigerants already sold and in use in air conditioners, etc., are not subject to the regulations of the Montreal Protocol and come under measures that are voluntarily implemented by each country involved. Demand for refrigeration and air conditioning equipment is growing rapidly, especially in developing countries. Yet, in the midstream and downstream stages of product life cycles, many countries are unprepared, lack a developed infrastructure when it comes to preventing leaks during usage of recovery and disposal of fluorocarbons when equipment is discarded. Hence, high GWP fluorocarbons are released into the atmosphere contributing to climate change. This could become an obstacle to achieving the Paris goal in which the global community will emit GHG net zero in the second half of this century. Thus, it is necessary to introduce appropriate policies and technologies and promote measures to mitigate climate change and protect the ozone layer. In order to mitigate climate change, measures to control emissions of fluorocarbons need to be implemented as part of a life cycle management, including not only upstream measures in the life cycle, but also midstream and downstream measures. Leveraging 20 years of domestic experience in curbing fluorocarbon emissions, the Ministry of the Environment Japan, MOEJ, established an international initiative on fluorocarbon life cycle management, IFL, in 2019 with the aim of mainstreaming the life cycle management of fluorocarbons. Working with governments, the private sector and international organizations, the IFL is used to promote fluorocarbon initiatives, innovation and cooperation, as well as promoting mutual benefits and assistance at every stage of the life cycle. These range from upstream to downstream, from increasing financial flows to building inventory mechanisms so that fluorocarbons can be dealt with at every stage, from preventing leaks and recovering and recycling of refrigerants. In 2020, an IFL partner country, Vietnam, amended its law on environmental protection to incorporate the concept of fluorocarbon life cycle management. And in 2021, Vietnam announced a government decree to implement that amendment with the intention of introducing a reporting system for businesses that handle refrigerants as well as obligations to recover and destruction of refrigerants. 
using Japan's Act on Rational Use and Appropriate Management of Fluorocarbons as reference, the MOEJ is cooperating in the development and implementation of the legislation in Vietnam. Cambodia, another IFL partner country with a thriving tourism industry, is facing the challenge of recovering and destruction of HFCs from air conditioners used in hotels and other facilities. Hence, with the aim of improving the skills of refrigeration and air conditioning engineers, Japan developed a refrigerant recovery and disposal manual. This manual was developed in the Khmer language for local operators in collaboration, Japanese technical experts and Cambodian academics. Further, in collaboration with the Climate and Clean Air Coalition, CCAC, the IFL published a resource book on policy measures on life cycle management of fluorocarbons. This collection of case studies explains best practices of policies in countries around the world, including developed and developing countries, and provides reference materials to help policymakers in their efforts in their countries. The MOEJ has conducted training for engineers in Thailand, Malaysia, Vietnam and elsewhere to demonstrate how to recover and destruction of refrigerants. In this way, Japan is promoting efforts to improve the basic knowledge and skills related to specific procedures, such as how to use detectors to prevent leaks, how to use destruction equipment and how to handle hazardous materials. Furthermore, Japan continues to provide online training for government officials in developing countries introducing the latest policies and technologies related to life cycle management, exchanging information between countries providing coaching for overcoming challenges and contributing to networking among participating governments and businesses. Concerning banks of fluorocarbons in refrigerating and air conditioning equipment used in communities, it is essential to establish a system for recovering refrigerants from equipment and then disposing of the fluorocarbons. The joint crediting mechanism, JCM, is being used as one of the means of effectively promoting the disposal of high GWP HFCs. In Thailand, Vietnam and the Philippines, projects to recover and dispose of HFCs have been formed and facilities introduced to incinerate refrigerants at high temperatures in order to render them harmless. Also, as an initiative of the Asian Development Bank, a co-benefit project is being formed in the Maldives to install an injection inlet at a waste incineration facility to incinerate fluorocarbons. Under the Paris Agreement, the implementation of nationally determined contributions, NDCs, by 2030, the formulation of long-term strategy, LTS, targets for decarbonization in the second half of the century, and the implementation of an enhanced transparency framework, ETF, to report GHG emissions are all being sought. Developing countries start to show growing interest in efforts to formulate HFC inventories in the fullness of time, and Japan is using IFL to start providing support in Indonesia and other countries. Inventory development will deepen understanding of the HFC emission situation in the countries involved, clarifying the fields where countermeasures are necessary moving forward. IFL is also ready to support those countries wish to include their HFC's emissions target in their NDCs, alongside the technical support at the implementation stage of their pledged NDCs. Fluorocarbon life cycle management is effective as a countermeasure against climate change and the protection of the ozone layer, and its importance is increasing as more climate change countermeasures are required. At the same time, promoting the introduction of high-efficiency equipment and properly managing equipment will lead to reductions in power consumption, creating co-benefits that contribute to energy security and climate change mitigation. Combined with the switch to natural refrigerants, 
it is important that Japan works to significantly reduce global emissions of fluorocarbons by managing them throughout their life cycle, including leak prevention, appropriate recovery, destruction, and recycling. For our planet, Japan will continue to work with other countries to achieve the life cycle management of fluorocarbons.